Folks, normally I start a video off like this giving you guys an apology. Saying sorry for waiting so long to get into the manhwas that you guys request even though they are amazing. But people, today, I gotta thank y'all. Out of all the manhwa you guys have recommended to me, I don't think any of them hit as hard as this one. Now yes, this is technically another hyper-violent high school manhwa, but this story comes with an energy that is unmatched. Like it's to the point that I don't even take this as falling under the same umbrella as the hyper-violent high school manhwa with the bullies and the main character learning martial arts and shit. This is something still similar to that, but different, and God, it's so good, and I'm so hyped that I started reading it. But enough dancing around the topic. People, today, we are talking about to not die. But before we hop into the manhwa review, guys, do not forget about the Donchiverse.com where we have a bunch of dope merch available for you to purchase. And now you don't even have to go to the actual website. Like, there should be shirts available on the bottom of this video for you to just click on and buy from here. Also, if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Now, as a go, Kenny JD says, on to the debauchery. Shit, wait, no, I lied. Huge warning before we get into this, this manhwa goes into very serious subjects, so if you are not down to hear about things like suicide, school violence, depression, anything of that nature, please click off this video. Don't want to trigger anybody by accident. All right, now we can get on to the story. So y'all remember the energy I was talking to you about, the energy that this story has that is unmatched? Well, the story starts off with that energy at 100, just to let you know how wild this shit is. Yeah, within the first few pages, we find our main character writing his will. He's a high schooler, writing his will. But you're probably wondering, don't you? Why is he writing his will? How is life so bad for this high schooler that he's writing a will now? Well, we find it out through a flashback where you watch our protagonist, whose name is Da Jun, by the way, getting jumped by his bully, Do Yun, and his friends while they sing him happy birthday. But get this, people. It's not even his birthday, bro. These guys just revel in ruining the idea of the birthday song for him by beating him up while they sing it. Like, I could never enjoy a birthday after this. Like, f every birthday I have because all I'm gonna think about is getting stomped out by a bunch of shitheads. Then they grab his birthday cake, stomp on that shit, and tell him to eat it. And because Da Jun is outnumbered, of course he eats it. It sucks, but he has to. Well, he doesn't have to, but I'm afraid that these guys would like kick his teeth in if he didn't. They didn't take a picture with him and shit. And deadass, while Do Yun is beating the crap out of him continuously, he's like, oh, you should be thankful because we're your only friends celebrating your birthday with you. Mind you, it's not even his birthday. These guys are just evil. Then to put the icing on the cake, my man grabs Da Jun's slipper and throws it off the roof. Stomping him out for no reason wasn't enough. Like sitting on his back and slapping his ass wasn't good enough, you had to throw a slipper off the roof too? I just don't understand what's up with these people and why they spend so much of their time just ruining one person's life. If the point of bullying somebody is to show that you're better than them, I guess, I don't, I don't really know, then why show your lesser by making your life all about them? Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. So Do Yun and his folks leave, right? They go downstairs, but before they leave, they tell Da Jun, hey, bring another cake tomorrow. Which means the cake they stepped on was a cake that Da Jun bought with his own money. They stepped on that shit for his fake birthday and told him to eat it, then threw a slipper off the roof. Why? 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 And y'all, it, it gets so much worse. Let's continue. So Da Jun goes downstairs, all the way downstairs to pick up his slippers. Then his teacher yells at him from the classroom so that all the students can see and laugh at him. And y'all know these high school teachers aren't gonna do shit, so he just continues yelling at him while all the, all the other students start talking shit. And that pretty much ends the flashback. So now we know why Da Jun is writing his will. His life is awful. Because this just happens every day. Like, Do Yun does not leave him alone. From how he's talking about this, this is a regular thing. He finishes writing as well, and after he's done, he thinks about the, how it would feel to be dead, you know? Like, how would it feel to finally escape this hell that he's been living in? He enjoys the idea of seeing Do Yun get dragged away for basically being the reason why he offed himself. But in a more sad and morbid realization, he understands that his brother probably wouldn't really care about his death. He says that his brother would be studying during his funeral, his sister would be on her phone, and he questions if his parents will even care if their mediocre son died. 
nice. So on top of Doi Yun making Dajun's life a living hell, life at home doesn't seem that good either. Like it's one thing when your parents mistreat you, right? That's obviously a terrible thing. Wouldn't want it to happen to anybody. But from what it looks like, Dajun's parents are just indifferent towards him. And that must hurt just as much. Because if all your parents do is ignore you and ignore your pleads for help, I'm sure Dajun has talked to them about getting bullied in school. Then to me, I don't know, that's equivalent to you saying you don't care about me. So honestly, if I was in Dajin's shoes, I would hate life too. Like, what's the point? Nobody cares. It doesn't even look like he has friends in his school. So like, no friends, no real family, and the only people he talks to in school beat him up for fun. Anyway, before he decides to unalive himself, he says, I should probably say bye to my parents. You know, I don't want to just die without telling them what's going to happen. So after school, he goes back home. He starts eating dinner with his family. Well, his family minus his mom. He asks his brother where mom is, and he's just like, I don't know. She said she's going to be late. Then he leaves. So there is one person who's not going to find out that, or actually two people who are not going to find out that Dajun's going to unalive himself soon. But nevertheless, Dajun continues. He's like, yo, dad, I got to talk to you, bro. Like, I'm sorry for not being that good of a son. And as he's trying to have this heart to heart with his dad, you know, like granted, the dad doesn't know what he's going to talk about but from what he's saying you can tell he's going to a very heartfelt place but the father doesn't give a f he did as tells his son move your face out the way because i'm trying to watch tv is it even worth telling them what you're gonna do now dajun like dead ass like why even bother it it doesn't make any sense they don't care but anyway because dajun realizes that no one's gonna listen to him he turns to watch the tv too and on the tv is a news report about a revenge murder that happened in another high school. The murderer is basically someone who was in Dajun's spot right now. However, as they're interviewing him while they have him under arrest, he straight up says, I'm not a murderer. Y'all don't know those bullies like I do. They talk shit about my family. They made my life a living hell. They did everything they could to turn my days into shit just because they felt like it. Then after he says that, he directs his message to all the people that might be in the spot that he was in. He's like, yo, for anyone out there like me, if you hear anybody trying to say forgive your bullies, f that. No one cares about your pain. Only you can save yourself. Wake up and do what you gotta do to survive. And bro, as this man is yelling, Da Jun looks hella inspired. His father's like, well, I don't agree with that. You shouldn't kill anybody regardless. Which I will say he's right about. Nothing justifies killing someone. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you gotta understand that if a kid is put in a spot where they cannot live because of these people harassing them all the time, it's very possible their mind may go to that place. Which is why to a character like him, he sees this as just justice. Which is why it's so important that when kids come up to teachers or counselors or their parents talking about their bullies it is imperative that these adults listen to them one day of bullying can lead to a whole lot of shit that no one wants to be a part of so while i do agree that this kid should not have killed his bullies whatever school he was a part of should have done a better job at taking care of the bullies in the first place anyway after dodgen's dad is all pissed and shit dodgen starts clapping he's like son that was the greatest tirade i've ever heard in my life he thinks to himself facts why should i die then he goes to sleep inspired he's like oh shit i'm about to kill doyun but then the logic steps in and he's like wait no i can get arrested i that this doesn't make any sense but then after thinking about all the times that doyun beat the life out of him he's like actually you know what i just need to defend myself so I i'm gonna bring this ice pick with me then the next day he goes to school with the ice pick right Doyun welcomes him in the way that you would expect Doyun to welcome him. But then he starts asking about the cake. And we all know Dajun did not get a goddamn cake. But while this is happening, Dajun is gripping this pick like, bro, I can do it right now. I can just do it right now. I mean, not in the classroom. Please don't do that, bro. Like, not at all. But like, at least not in the classroom. Don't be stupid. But Dajun is panicking, yo. He can't do it. He's like, nah, bro. Doyun is scary as shit. And the moment Doyun brings him up to eye level because he's pissed about not having the cake, Dajun freezes and push the pick away. So that whole thing was for nothing. He describes it basically as trauma. It's PTSD. He's not gonna overcome that just because he saw some dude talk about how you shouldn't end yourself because bullies are ruining your life. You should defend yourself. But as realistic as this is, it does suck for Dajun because after this, Doyun's like, well, you know what? We're gonna have ourselves a special party after school. You gonna come with us. And unfortunately, these guys bring Dajun to the most sus construction area of all time then they lay out a bunch of shit for him some ramen some soda but worst worst of all some alcohol and da jun is underage and he doesn't want to drink but do yun don't care 
And they don't plan on just giving him the alcohol. They make some gross ass concoction of everything. And to make it even worse, this nasty ass child spits in the drink. One of them even puts their sock in it. They even put dirt in the shit. Then they give him the cup and they tell him to drink it. And when he says, I don't think I could do it because obviously you can't dodge in. I'm not doing that shit and I'm grown. You, you are a child. You definitely can't do that shit. But when he says he can't, Doyun just slaps him. So as you can see, these children are not human. They're little demons and I wish they were in Get Schooled, bro, because I know General Na would give them the work. And for what these kids are doing, they definitely deserve the General Na smoke. Nah, nah, actually, I would ask for General Na and Hanrim M to jump in and jump these kids. But anyway, unfortunately, Da Jun drinks the nasty ass concoction. He obviously throws up. And then Do Yun's like, oh, because you didn't drink it the first time, it doesn't count. You gotta do it again. So up until nighttime, they force this poor child to drink this nasty ass drink over and over and over again. And he keeps throwing it up. But because he's swallowing the shit, the alcohol doesn't just magically leave his system. It's still hitting him in some way. So he's getting tipsy, doesn't know what that feels like. So I'm sure he's panicking. And he's also hella nauseous. Like at this point, he's not even really moving. But Do Yun gives no f He gives his friends money to buy more drinks. And then he picks his poor child's head up and tries to feed him more alcohol. Yo, I know I said this before, but damn. I really thought New York was wild when it came with the crazy shit kids were doing in high school. But I was obviously wrong. This makes New York shit seem basic. Because why are we going to such depths to ruin this kid's life? Like, for real. This, this is just insane at this point. But because Da Jun for the life of him cannot drink anymore, he slaps the bottle away and dips. But Da Jun is not only slower than Do Yun, he's also mad weak because of all the things that he was consuming. So Do Yun catches up mad quick and starts beating the living hell out of him again. I feel really bad for Da Jun because he got beat up earlier today, he got beat up some more later, had to drink all this nasty shit, and is still getting beat up. The fact that he's even able to stand up at any point is amazing. But after Do Yun finishes beating up Da Jun, he starts dragging his ass back to the construction site. But Da Jun peeps a car on its way. And Da Jun, at this point, if he continues, he's going to die. And the beatdowns are probably not doing him any justice either. So out of panic and out of defense, he pushes Do Jun into the street. And dumbass Do Yun, instead of trying to get out the way, he throws his angry look at Da Jun, then he gets hit by the car. And with that, Da Jun dips because no, <laughs> he needs to go home. He needs to find an alibi. He just definitely committed a crime just now. And if somebody caught that, he is in big trouble. So he goes back home, goes to sleep, cowers under his sheets and is like, it would be so late if I don't get arrested tomorrow, but why do I feel like I'm gonna get arrested tomorrow? So the next day, he goes to school. And to his disbelief, everything is fine. Classes go on normally. Nobody bothers him. He senses a new level of serenity in his area. Then as he's wondering why no one is talking about it, his homeroom teacher announces that Do Yun got hit by a car last night after jaywalking, which means currently no one knows that Da Jun was involved with it. So with that, Da Jun is hype, bro. He's like, oh shit, they don't know it's me. Oh, I'm about to live my life, fam. So for a moment, he accepts the bliss, bro. He starts reading a book for the first time in a long time. Apparently he hasn't read a book since middle school. But as he's reading, some random kid out of nowhere is like, I know you pushed Do Yun. Luckily, the guy's friend is like, that's Da Jun, bro. Da Jun does not have the guts to push somebody into a car. You're lying. And they drop it. But it does still scare Da Jun. Nevertheless, he continues his day. He, he kind of cries a bit too because he's like, damn, this is the piece that Do Yun stole from me. And it's not even like it's special. This is normal. This is how school's supposed to be. Then as he's just enjoying his piece while looking out the window, he peeps a cop car roll up to his school. Damn, bro! Then to make matters worse, a student calls Da Jun like, yo, you're needed in the teacher's office immediately. Then everything else happens so fast. Next panel, homie gets handcuffed. They straight up tell him he's under arrest for pushing Do Yun into the street. The homeroom teacher's like, bro, you told me he was jaywalking. But the cops are like, nah, fam, we didn't get a camera off the truck, but there's a camera in the area nearby that caught him pushing Do Yun into the street, so we know. And then tell me how the homeroom teacher, knowing full well that Da Jun gets bullied by Do Yun, is like, why Da Jun? You were just a normal student. You were so normal. Why'd you have to push him into the street? My man really you were such a normal student you didn't notice 
You didn't notice me getting beat up all the time. You didn't notice the bruises on my face coming back into school. You didn't question why I was always late to class because niggas were throwing my slipper off the fucking roof. All these questions I have for you, sir. You're blowing my mind right now. And the face he has is so concerned, like, don't look concerned for me. You didn't care. But anyway, his parents end up finding out. Luckily, he doesn't go to jail because they found out that Do Yun was bullying him. Also, because he was under the influence, that helped this case even more. Wild how them forcing him to drink alcohol actually saved his life. But to add on more bad news, he also gets expelled from school. I mean, that, that was pretty obvious. But to make matters even worse, because it's not like they've gotten worse enough, his dad kicks him out the house. Homie just says get out and doesn't even look at him when he says it. No one looks at him for that matter. And it's like, the mom is crying, but mom, you could be doing something here. Stop wasting your tears when you don't actually care. I'm sorry if I'm getting a little bit emotional here, but they're messing with my boy, Da Jun. He doesn't deserve any of this shit. And I think it hits even harder because I could see all this shit happening in the real world. And man, seeing him struggle like this just gets me so aggravated, which is why if I didn't make it clear before, I'm gonna say it again. If you are getting bullied, if you know someone getting bullied, let people know. All these situations are spurred by people either not talking or folks just not listening. We need more people talking and especially more people listening because that's where the main problem is, you know. It's fine if the students can say what's going on, but when you have teachers who are like, oh, well, they're just, they're just having fun, you know, they're boys, they're playing around. No, fix it or try to do something to fix it. Please don't let it linger. Anyway, Dajun leaves his home in the rain, might I add, and guess who he runs into? Doyun's dumbass minions. They bring him to the same construction site they went to yesterday, and they go to town on my boy, fam. Like, it's worse than last time, and it's unnecessary, bro. And tell me how, as they're beating him up, one of them is like, oh, you're the devil, Dajun. Like, we get it. Doyun may be a piece of shit to you, but he's our friend. Then he's like, we'll stop if you apologize for our poor friend Doyun. And this shit, this is what Dajun needed to snap. He's like, wait, I'm more evil because I pushed him in front of a car even though he made my whole high school life terrible? Nah, that's bullshit, bro. So Dajun is like, nah, f that. I did nothing wrong. All you guys did was torture me. And the moment I want to fight back, I'm evil? Y'all could suck my d But because these bullies don't want to hear the truth, the same one who was talking shit telling them to apologize starts going down and punching him some more. But Dajun is done standing by. What does he have to lose? He has no home, he has no school, he has nothing. So he grabs a brick and starts beating the mess out this boy. Good shit, bro. Then our boy gets back up a new man. And he, now, he is ready for the smoke. But to find out what happens next, you're gonna have to read the manhwa for yourself. Now, yes, I get it. Most of what we talked about was the sad backstory. And now we're finally getting into the beginning of his growth arc. But I stopped here for a very important reason. The rest of the shit that happens in this story needs to be experienced for yourself because, yo, it is far from what I expected. And I mean that in the good way. Like, I thought this was still going to stay within the high school realm. It still kind of does, but it, I, I thought it would still, like, he would somehow find his way into another school or something and he would continue trying to defend himself against other bullies and maybe learn how to fight. But it's not that it's a twist on that it's a little it's way more different than that and i like it more without spoiling too much let's just say the consequences that dajin has to deal with is permanent and though him getting expelled seems bad now he will soon find out it was all a blessing in disguise because the supporting characters that he meets because of this situation bro they are so so amazing this supporting cast is like the high school version of Ryo Zanpaku from Kenichi. If y'all have no idea what I'm talking about, basically it's like he entered a dojo full of teenage martial arts masters, each with their own compelling story and their own unique fighting style that makes them even more different. And by far the best part about the supporting cast is that they truly do feel like family. And the story makes sure to show you how their bond shines, which means the wholesome scenes also go crazy in the story. Same way how it can get mad depressing in one moment, it can get extremely heartfelt and emotional in another moment. But that is all I can say without spoiling too much. I'm sorry for having this video drag on for so long. I just really had to get all my energy out about this manhwa because it's becoming one of my favorites. We already started reacting to it on Twitch, so if you want to see me react to it live, check me out on Twitch. If you guys enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, subscribe if you want to see more of me, and hit that bell to stay notified of whenever I upload new content. 
Hunters, patrons, my lovely supporters, thank you guys so much for all you give each month. Without you guys, I truly would not be able to make content like this. If you want to become a patron and get dope perks like watching Honest Gaming History and videos like this early, head to the Patreon link in the description below. And there should also be something up here somewhere letting you guys know as well. But with that being said, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.